everybody. It's story time. And as you know, we always start our story time with a song. Our song needs three signs. More, read, and happy. Are you ready to sing? The more we read together, 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 the more we read together, how happy we'll be. Big books and small books and short books and tall books, the more we read together, how happy we'll be. Good job. Today our story time theme is something fun. Always, we always try to be fun. But this one might be something that all of you can relate to. Do you remember earlier we did a story time theme about cats? So I thought it was time that we did a story time theme about dogs. I think we'll probably even have some time to go to my house and I'll show you my dogs. They're really sweet and I think they're gonna love to meet you. But right now, we're gonna get started with our story time all about dogs. Taxi Dog by Svend Otto. Once upon a time in Copenhagen, Denmark, a small stray dog wandered up to a taxi stand. The taxi drivers all liked him so much that they gave him a name, Jasper, and bought him a beautiful red collar. The old grocer, whose shop was around the corner, found him a basket to sleep in, and he was given the job of rat catcher. When the garbage men came early in the morning, Jasper would wake up the grocer by scratching at his door. Then Jasper was let out to catch rats. He was good at his job. Afterwards, they walked to the bakery to buy bread for breakfast. Jasper always got a pretzel as a reward. He would carry it around the corner to the cafe, where the waiter gave Jasper a large bowl of coffee to go with his pretzel. But best of all, Jasper loved to ride in taxis. Sometimes he took a taxi to a new part of the city and jumped off to explore. When he was ready to move on, he caught another taxi. Luckily, all taxi cabs had running boards in those days. In this way, Jasper traveled everywhere, even far into the countryside. One morning, when the royal guards were on a parade, Jasper joined their march. Another time he visited the railway station. It was always easy finding a cab back to his own taxi stand. Near the taxi stand, there were some chickens. One afternoon, as Jasper lay dozing, a tire on his taxi blew out with an enormous bang. The chickens flew every which way in fright. Jasper didn't know what to make of it all. So he jumped over the fence and began chasing the chickens. What a hullabaloo! Maybe Jasper thought the chickens had caused the blowout. In any case, the commotion brought a police officer. Come with me, he said, and he rode off with Jasper trotting alongside. As they passed the cafe, a visiting farmer was sitting out front. Hmm, I could use a watchdog like that he told the policeman. And that was how Jasper was sent to the farm, where he was tied up and kept in a doghouse. How he missed all his friends in the city. So one morning, he gnawed through the rope and ran till he came to a road. I'll wait, he thought. A taxi will come soon. At last one came. It was an old bone shaker but Jasper took it anyhow. That evening, Jasper was back at the grocer's door. His old friend was glad to see him. And Jasper might be taking taxis to this very day, if not for an accident. One morning, as he was racing for a cab, Jasper was hit by a bus. 
He's done for this time, his friends thought sadly. But luckily for Jasper, they were wrong. He was only stunned. Less than an hour later, he was back at home, where he saw a charming dachshund. She was, by far, the sweetest dog he had ever seen. And Jasper forgot everything else. The grocer, the rats, the pretzels, the coffee at the cafe, even riding around in taxis. Imagine that. The end. So we've propped open the door for our chicks here and we've decided to let them out today for the very first time. They're going to be out on their own and able to free range. That's what we call it when they can just kind of walk around and get their own food. So you can see some of them have figured it out. They're out. These guys right here either are a little bit scared or they just haven't figured out that they can go outside yet. So they're kind of lagging behind. already found something to eat. Some of them haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> the door's open, but they haven't figured out how to get out yet. But the ones that have made it are very excited to be out. And we saw that that, that chicken right there, she found something to eat right away. She ate it all up. And they're running in and out of some of the other houses and finding things to eat. They did lots of stretching their wings. They're really exploring. And they're really excited just to be out and have a little bit of freedom. You can see right Behind them is a full-grown chicken, so they're not that far away from being full-grown now. They're a few months old, and probably in another month to two months, they're going to be fully grown. I would say another month. But they are enjoying the sunshine and the fresh air today, and they're fighting just a little bit. Puppies are like that by Jan Flug. Puppies like to chew on things like bones or rubber balls or even sticks. This puppy is chewing on somebody's sneaker. He will have to be scolded. Puppies don't like to be scolded. They hang their heads and tuck in their tails and look very sorry. But a few minutes later, their tails are wagging again. Puppies are like that. Puppies think it is great fun to bark. They will bark at nothing, just to see who can bark the loudest. Or they will bark at something that flies, like a butterfly. When puppies feel very brave, they bark at animals much bigger than they are. Best of all, they like barking at cats. Puppies are like that. 
but barking at cats can be a big mistake. Puppies like to play together. These puppies are playing tug of war to see which one is stronger. Puppies think that every dog is their friend, but some big dogs want to be left alone. These puppies are having a race to see which one can run faster. Puppies are like that. Puppies are curious. They find all sorts of strange and interesting animals. Some move surprisingly fast. Others move very slowly. This puppy is sniffing in a woodchuck burrow to see if anyone is at home. The woodchuck is watching from his back door. Puppies love to chase things. They will chase anything that runs or flies, especially rabbits, or birds, or squirrels, but they almost never catch anything. Puppies like to dig, especially where the dirt is nice and soft, as in a garden. This makes them very dirty, but they don't care. Puppies are like that. When a puppy gets very dirty, like this one, he must have a bath. Puppies don't like baths. They hate to be wet and cold, but they love to be dried in a warm towel. Puppies don't always want to run and dig and play. Sometimes they just want to curl up in their beds and go to sleep. Puppies are like that too. The End Angus and the Cat by Marjorie Flack Each day as Angus grew older, he grew longer, but not much higher. Scotty dogs grow that way. Now as Angus grew older and longer, he learned many things. He learned it is best to stay in one's own yard, and frogs can jump, but not to jump after them, and balloons go pop. Angus also learned not to lie on the sofa and not to take somebody else's food and things like that. But there was something outdoors Angus was very curious about but had never learned about. And that was cats. The leash was too short. Until one day, what should Angus find indoors lying on the sofa but a strange little cat? Angus came closer. The cat sat up. Angus came closer. Up jumped the cat onto the arm of the sofa. Angus came closer and <sighs> that little cat boxed Angus's ears. Woof, woof, said Angus. Up jumped the cat onto the sofa back, up to the mantel, and Angus was not high enough to reach her. But at lunchtime she came down to try and take Angus's food, though not for long. Up she jumped onto the table, and Angus was not high enough to reach her. At nap time, there she was, sitting in Angus's own special square of sunshine, washing her face, though not for long. Up she jumped onto the windowsill, and Angus was not high enough to reach her. For three whole days, Angus was very busy chasing that cat, but she always went up out of reach, until on the fourth day, he chased her up the stairs, into the bedroom, and she was completely gone. Angus looked under the bed. No cat was there. Angus looked out of the window, into his yard into the next yard. No cat could he see anything.
anywhere. Angus went down the stairs. He looked on the sofa. No cat was there. He looked on the mantel. No cat was there. Angus looked on the table and on the window sills. No cat was indoors anywhere. So Angus was all alone. There was no cat to box his ears. There was no cat to take his food. There was no cat to sit in his sunshine. There was no cat to chase away. So Angus was all alone and he had nothing to do. Angus missed the little cat. But at lunchtime, he heard this noise. And there she was again, and Angus knew, and the cat knew that Angus knew, that Angus was glad the cat came back. The end. This is Liz. She's white with brown spots. And this is Lucy. She's brown with white spots. And they're sisters. Lucy loves to play. She loves to play fetch. She can play fetch until she's so exhausted she just has to lay down and chew on her tire. Liz doesn't like to play very much. She mostly likes to be petted. Liz and Lucy want to be friends with all the cats so badly, but none of the cats are interested. And sometimes the cats even get a little bit mad. Even though they have their own water dish, Liz and Lucy love to drink from the hose. And they like it even better when there's a squirt bottle to spray right into their mouths. These dogs are so special and so sweet. We love them, and I'm sure you love your dogs too. Lucy's telling you goodbye. She hopes to see you again soon. How Rocket Learned to Read by Tad Hills Rocket loved to play. He loved to chase leaves and chew sticks. He loved to listen to the birds sing. Every fall morning, after chasing leaves, Rocket would lie down in his favorite spot under his favorite tree. There he'd sniff the neighborhood smells and settle in for a good nap. But one day, a little yellow bird startled Rocket. Aha! My first student! Wonderful, she sang. Rocket was confused. Student? I'm not a... But if I am your teacher, the bird interrupted, then you must be my student. 
Rocket found it hard to argue with this bird. I am so glad you saw my sign, the bird chirped. Oh yes, I can see it, Rocket said, but I don't know how to read. Can't read? Fantastic, she waved a wing. Welcome to my classroom. But I just came here to nap, Rocket said. No, no, there will be no napping in class, declared the bird, except, of course, during nap time. Well, then I can take a nap over here, said Rocket. I've had a very busy morning. Not to worry. I'll be around every day, chirped the bird, until the weather turns. As Rocket breathed in the crisp air, the little yellow bird hung her banner. Ah, the wondrous, mighty, gorgeous alphabet, she marveled, where it all begins. Opening up a book, the bird began to read. She sang out the story of an unlucky dog named Buster, who'd lost his favorite bone. A cool breeze carried her lively voice across the yard. At first, Rocket was disturbed. But before long, he found himself captivated. To Rocket, the story was as delicious as the earthy smells of fall. It was as exciting as chasing leaves. He closed his eyes and listened to every word. As Buster dug and dug under the lilac bush, the bird read, he felt something familiar. Rocket waited. Was it the bone, he wondered? Silence. Was it the bone? He called out to the bird. More silence. Was it the bone? Rocket hollered. Suddenly he was rushing to the tree. Well, was it? But the little yellow bird was gone. The next morning, Rocket arrived early. At last, the little yellow bird appeared. Hello, how wonderful to see you in class, she chirped. I can tell by your waggy tail that you are well rested. I'd like to hear the end of the story, please, said Rocket. That seems like a fine way to start the day, chirped the bird. She gave Rocket a name tag and began to read. Every day, Rocket returned to the little yellow bird's classroom. In the morning, the bird taught him a new letter. Until he had learned all the wondrous, mighty, gorgeous alphabet. Together, they sang out the sounds that each letter makes and spelled the sounds they heard around them. With a g and many errs, they spelled Mr. Barker's growl. Grrr. They spelled out the sound of the wind, which was growing colder by the day. Soon they were spelling words like F-A-L-L, -L, fall, for the gusty time of year, and R-E-D, red, for the color of the leaves. And each afternoon the bird read a story. She read stories about dogs and birds. She read about leaves changing colors and about birds flying south for the winter. Then one day the weather turned and the letter banner disappeared. See you again in the glorious spring, the bird sang. And as she flew into the wintry sky, she called. Don't forget, words are built one letter at a time. The days grew shorter and the leaves fell from the trees. The grass became crunchy. Soon Rocket's classroom disappeared under the snow. He remembered the little yellow bird's alphabet and practiced his letters. Rocket thought about the bird's sweet chirp while he sounded out words like D-I-G, dig, and W-I-N-D, wind, and C-O-L-D, cold. He made new friends and spelled their names. Hello, E-M-M-A, Emma. Hi there, F-R-E-D, Fred. He spelled everything. S-U-N, sun. M-E-L-T, melt. When Rocket spelled M-U-D, mud, he knew that spring 
as it always does, had returned. The breeze blew warmer, the grass grew greener, and a sign appeared. Class starts tomorrow. Early the next morning, Rocket rushed to his classroom. As he waited, he spelled W-A-G, wag. Soon the little yellow bird arrived. Aha, my star student, she sang. How wonderful to see you. I can tell by your waggy tail that you are ready for class. Then together they began to read. They read stories about birds flying north in the spring. They read about picnics in the warm sun. And they read about Buster, the lucky dog who found his bone under the lilac bush. And when they were done, they read it again. And again. And A-G-A-I-N. Again. The end. Weren't those some great stories about dogs? I love dog stories. I think we could probably do at least three or four more story times all about dogs because there's just so many great books out there. I'm so glad that we also get to come to my house and meet my dogs because they love people and they love being on camera for you. And now it is time for us to say goodbye with our goodbye song. Remember for our goodbye song, we always do three signs. We do time, goodbye and friends. You ready? It is time to say goodbye to all our friends. It is time to say goodbye to all our friends. It is time to say goodbye. Clap your hands, wink your eyes. It's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Goodbye everybody. See you next week.